We were spying on them. They were spying on us. And I think everybody just said, let's leave it at that. That night, the men of Gudgeon celebrated their survival with a feast of steak and beer. But back in Washington, Navy brass were not impressed. Gudgeon had become an embarrassment, the first American submarine to be surfaced by the Soviets. It was an episode of Cold War brinksmanship that would stay secret for the next 30 years. They forced us to do what they wanted us to do. So it was absolutely a victory for them. In response, the commander of America's Atlantic fleet, Admiral Gerald Wright, offered an incentive for his men to even the score. A case of Jack Daniels whiskey to the first crew to surface a Soviet sub. Ted Davis was captain of the USS Grenadier at the time. So the word got out that this proclamation existed in a large frame outside of Admiral Wright's office. And immediately we said, well, this is a challenge. Davis and his crew got their shot at the prize in May 1959. Training off the coast of Iceland, they came across a Soviet diesel sub. Aided by an American spy plane, Grenadier chased its prey, trapping it beneath the waves for nine hours. And at 12.30 that night, the sonar hollered, he's surfacing, he's surfacing, he's surfacing. There he was, on the surface, loud and clear. While the spy plane circled above, snapping surveillance photos like this one, the men of Grenadier claimed their reward. And we sent our message out and said, have surfaced Soviet submarine, request Jack Daniels report aboard immediately. Their achievement was worth far more than a case of whiskey. As it turned out, they had surfaced a brand new Zulu-class sub, the first Soviet submarine converted to carry missiles. The Navy now knew the Soviets had matched their ability to launch a strike from the safety of the seas. It is everything we're afraid of. The Soviets have now shown us that they can actually engineer a Pearl Harbor in a nuclear age. The need to keep track of Russian missile subs raised the stakes of undersea espionage. But by now, it was clear that diesel boats were simply too vulnerable, too limited by their need to resurface to succeed at such risky work. The future of submarine spying belonged to the nukes. Nuclear-powered subs that were quieter, faster, and could stay submerged longer than anything that had come before.